the RCMP took advantage of our beautiful sunny day holding a fundraising barbecue outside of the Lloydminster detachment this afternoon. This is the first of three sponsored barbecues with all the money raised donated to Relay for Life. Century 21 provided food and condiments so all the profit goes to the cause. This was scheduled for a couple of Fridays ago in a snowstorm and we were lucky enough to cancel and move it to a Monday and we just got a great turnout. So we really thank people for coming out and supporting this good, uh, good cause. The barbecue raised $525 for Relay. The RCMP is holding another event this Friday at Boundary Ford. A week full of helping the community wrapped up on Sunday and as Elise Cox explains, one local group is making sure one of our valued parks is getting the attention it deserves. First Baptist Church members woke up earlier than usual this Sunday morning to clean up at Bud Miller Park. The, the church is not just about meeting in, in church services on Sunday morning. The church is part of the community um, to, you know, to create an environment together with the people in this community to make this a great place to, to live and raise your family. They adopted the park as part of Pitch In Week and are working hard to make it an attractive summer destination. Well, we've, I've picked everything up from uh, pop bottles to uh, water bottles to sticks to bottle caps to broken little toys to Oh, grass, you name it, dog feces. <laughs> so it may not be the most glamorous job, but they're just trying to contribute their part. Uh, as a church that we're called to, uh, to be a part of the community, and, and I'm seeing a level of excitement and, and the passion and people looking forward to this every year, and it's been great. It's the second year the church has adopted the park, but they hope their involvement becomes contagious around the community. And I think everybody should... Uh, Learn from it and appreciate what everybody's doing here today and uh, maybe everybody will realize that the parks are a place for us to keep clean. And they're already excited to be involved again next year. Uh, and I think it's something that we're looking forward to as an annual event uh, from our church uh, to take people out of the community and, and, you know, and feel like they're part of the community in that sense as a faith community as well as in, you know, being a part of the neighbor, neighborhood. So the church is proud to be wrapping up Pitch In Week with a clean park for families to enjoy with the coming warm weather. Elise Cox, New Gap News. We're starting a new feature tonight called Retrospect, looking at what made headlines this week over the past 25 years, all from the Border City Archives. In this week's edition, Brian Hardy takes us through the installment of the border markers from proposal to completion. In May of 1991, Lloydminster was looking for a distinctive landmark to represent its border city status. A border arch was one of the original proposals. This is what it should look like. The concept for the border marker could change, but not in any big way. There will be an oil derrick on one side and a grain elevator on the other. The marker will stretch over Highway 16 at the intersection of Highway 17. The city has allocated $50,000 towards the project. It hopes to receive about $100,000 in grants. Soon when people drive through Lloydminster, they will see the marker right here. The city hopes the arch will be finished by this time next year. In just over a week's time, the city of Lloydminster will have a new look. In the end, a series of four border markers were chosen, but not without a lot of controversy and cost overruns. In May of 1994, the new border city beacons were ready to be erected. The uh, four towers should take approximately 12 hours to set up, uh, starting off at the South Traffic Island on Highway 16. The border marker, which has been a contentious issue for a number of Midwest residents, will definitely be difficult to miss, as they'll be international orange in color and reach 100 feet into the air at a price tag of $440,000. But Mayor Pat Gulak is pleased that the structures will finally be constructed. It'd be nice to get it up and out of the way and people know that it's there and that's it. But the most carefully prepared plans will often go wrong, as we'll show you in our next installment of Retrospect, this week from the archives. Retrospect this week from the archives is brought to you by Webb's Ford. 
Worth your while to drive the extra mile. Webb's Ford and Vermillion. An emergency can happen to anyone at any time. In this month's one-on-one -on -one RCMP interview, I sat down with Lloydminster's top cop, Staff Sergeant Dave Callist, talking about some of the simple ways residents can be prepared. Thank you very much for joining us, Staff Sergeant. And uh, this month we're going to be talking about Emergency Preparedness Week, which actually kicked off yesterday. Lots of people here think that emergencies can't or won't happen to them. What kinds of things can people in our region be prepared for? What does happen here? Well, I think the primary thing for uh, the Lloydminster area is certainly severe weather. Uh, that can happen anywhere. Uh, but uh, severe weather is one of those things like uh, heavy rains, thunderstorms, tornadoes. Uh, in the winter time, we can have uh, severe blizzards, uh, potentially ice storms. So those are the kind of um, uh, risks that we face. So it's obviously not something we can prevent, but how can we prepare? Well, uh, there's a few things that you can do ahead of time. And uh, what Emergency Preparedness Week is all about is getting people sort of aware of what they can do uh, ahead of time. Uh, the most important thing is to make a plan. Uh, so that you have some idea of what, uh, where you may go in the event of an emergency uh, and to be really on your own for a period of 72 hours if the emergency is bad enough. Uh, for example, we're coming up to the one year anniversary of Slave Lake uh, and that was probably uh, one of the best examples of a very severe emergency in a community uh, that, that hit. So those people had to uh, really, they were kind of on their own for a period of 72 hours while emergency services uh, responded to that, um, uh, to that situation. So in that kit, you should have some food, some water. Uh, the food should be canned food that uh, isn't perishable and uh, that doesn't need a lot of pre preparation. Um, have a can opener to open the cans, obviously. Uh, a flashlight with batteries, uh, a radio that uh, is either battery powered or crank powered is a good idea. Um, just some um, uh, basic uh, items to get you through such as a first aid kit. Uh, we encourage people to have some cash on hand uh, so that uh, if they need to purchase items uh, that they can do that. And the cash should be in fives and tens and not you know hundred dollar bills. As well as having a copy of your emergency plan, the contact numbers that, uh, of people that you want to phone. And there are some things that families and older people should probably consider having in their kits, such as diapers if you, if you have a small child or certain medications as well, right? Right, yeah. It, your kit should be specific to you. So if uh, you have uh, infants that are still on diapers, uh, you should have diapers in the kit, uh, again, for a period of 72 hours. So think about how many diapers you use in three days and uh, put that in there. Elderly people that uh, may be taking uh, specific medications uh, should have an extra supply of those medications in their kit so that uh, uh, if there is an emergency, they have access to that and uh, you know, they're not going without. And uh, where can people find out this information and, and any other information on how to be prepared? The best place to go is uh, to www.getprepared.ca and there is a phone number as well. It's 1-800-O-CANADA uh, and it's 1-800-622-6232. Uh, Obviously very important information that everyone needs to know in case of an emergency. Uh, thank you very much for sharing some of your time with us, Staff Sergeant. Thanks for having me. <laughs>